G'day, how you going? This is Ian Apolis here, your acrylic guru from Australia. Welcome to my video here. If you're new to me channel, hit the thumbs up and be sure to subscribe, okay? I've got a lot of content in my channel for you subscribers who like to follow tutorials, so check it out. Now today, well before we get going, I always like to get the sizes up there in centimetres and inches, so we all know what size canvas panel I'm using. And I'll also uh, get some colours hooting and tooting all the way up the screen there as well, so you can write those ones down as well. And throughout the video, you will see what different brushes I'm using that work for me, so you can use the same type if you have them, or something similar, all right? And now this is a canvas panel I made. It's on a good quality cloth canvas, glued to a um, lightweight canvas board, all right? So come over here, and I wanna show you what I'm doing today, because a good friend of mine, Mark Grossi, a Facebook friend of mine, he's an artist, he does a lot of oil paintings, and he's very Bob Ross inspired. And I asked him if I can paint some of his paintings, and he says, absolutely, Ian, go for it. So I've gone and picked a subject of his, because a lot of my subjects can be the same, they go off track and get the same, so I need to change it up a bit, all right? Get over here. So what I've got on my monitor here is one of Mark Grossi's um, oil paintings, and it's a beautiful sunset with some obvious um, evergreen trees. Uh, it's snow time, there's a bit of a stream, and a hut or a barn or a cabin, okay? And something like this, you can even add a mountain in if you want, but I won't worry about the mountain. Uh, I'm gonna do my version of his painting here, but I'm gonna be doing it in acrylic, so I'll be showing you how to do this oil painting of Mark Grossi's in acrylics. So, because I'm using acrylic, I wanna condition my canvas so it's gonna blend like the oil artists get with their oil paint. So I've got my soft student poster craft paint here, and I'm mixing it up with some clear medium retarder, which would slow down the drying time of this acrylic paint, okay? And this is gonna be like, a magic surface to get the acrylic to blend. So I've got my brush loaded up, and I'm using a quite a big 50 millimeter, two inch synthetic brush just to apply it to the canvas. So as it's not gonna take all day getting it on there. So I want this all on there. I was only gonna do half the sky, but I was thinking I'll do the whole canvas so I can get the reflection in the little lake that's gonna be here as well. So it's up to you how you do it in two parts, the sky first, then the bottom part later, or to do a whole lot at once. Okay, all right, so I've got all this conditioned onto my canvas panel, and I'm going to get it right into the teeth of it there. Okay, get all that build up off the edge. I'm sick of bringing that into the painting at times. Okay, now I wanna just massage that nice and level. Next color I'd like to use, I'm not even gonna wash the applicating brush, is me Indian yellow with no retarder. All the retarder I need's on the canvas oak already. So I'm gonna get some of this Indian yellow. I love this color, Indian yellow. And we wanna incorporate the center of the sunset into our painting. So I don't want it center, I want it a little bit off center. Well, where's my stream gonna be about there? Oh, it might be pretty close to center. So I'm gonna get that in there and probably there as well get that in there beautiful now see down the bottom here i want to just do that okay now the top i want to add my red so down here i've got some crimson red i'm going to just wipe the build up off that not washing it I want to pick up my red onto my applicating brush. And I want to get this incorporated with that yellow there, creating our orange. Now spear this into an artistic way you feel you can probably get something going. I'm spearing it in now just like so. I might put a bit there and a bit there. I'm gonna wipe the brush before I attempt to pull the bottom water across. I'm hoping this is going to work for the acrylics here. Okay. 
Well, I'll put a bit of white in that maybe. I'm just seeing how the bottom goes. Okay, now I want to get this top blended in, but I'll just finish getting some more of this scooter together. Okay. So I'm just playing around with it because it's going to have all the trees in front of it. Now grab a blending brush and obviously a paper towel, a towel, a rag or something to, to blend out, to wipe off the build up. Now I want to blend the yellow into the red, wipe it as you go. Okay, manipulate it, add your turmoil in your blending strokes. See I'm creating the orange within the yellow, pushing it out that way now. If you have a different way you like to blend, try it your way. I'm just showing you my way. I'm getting this into that red now. And I want to create the artistic look for me sky now. Beautiful. Now I don't want to bring too much of that yellow into the red because I want to get a bit of blue in there. And I don't want it turning too green. I'm going to blend that down there because we're going to have a stream down here. So I know my stream's going to be pretty much here. If you saw on the picture in the beginning of the video. So I'm blend blending that nice and softly. All right. Next colour I have on my palette, I'm using phalo blue for the blue colour in the sky. So we'll get some of this in there. Get over here done. I want to push it on over here as well. And then just trace it into that red carefully. We can add some clouds in here to break up the sky as well. Okay, let's just leave that. It looks a bit nonsensy at the moment, but we'll blend that now. So I want to blend the red and the blues together just to soften them. We'll, it's going to create a dark edge on the edge of the painting. Okay. And the red to me is very stark. What you can do is we can add some clouds into that to break it up so it just doesn't look like a weird three layered band of colors. So we've blended that together. Now what I want to do is just incorporate the glare of the sun in the middle. I'm using the craft paint without any retarder on a appropriate size round pouncer. Okay. I want the glare of the sun right in the middle so I'm gonna do that just like that see I want it about that high I suppose oh yeah we're gonna have trees coming down all right I should have went up a bit higher but not to worry I'll try and get by now I want to stamp this out and glare it into that yellow slash orange color we got there all right how's that see we've got that beautiful glare right in the middle I'm gonna slowly sneak it up See what I did? I sneaked it up a bit. Stamp it out, stamp it out. And then come out into that yellow slash orange. It's going to lighten it up and make it look more lusty and beautiful. Okay. Now, I, it's up to you. I do want to grab a blending brush and just soften the bubbles out of that. Just like this. I'm just dabbing it on and off now. I'm not really grinding it together. I'm just being very careful. Now we've got the glare, we can add some clouds and finish that off. So for me clouds, my favorite color is the titanium white out of a tube, very good quality artist paint. I'm using my fan brush to apply them. Now Mark didn't have any clouds in his. But I feel I'll put something in there. So we're going to have the trees up here. I want something just hovering over that orange. And this is already going to pick up the red, the blue, whatever. 
So create some clouds, however you want. Scrumble them in, scribble them in like that. And all those wet colours underneath are already making for the um, shadow colours in the cloud. So now I'm going to blend that as I normally do. Twisting it, wiping the brush as you go. Don't grind the living hell out of it. I'll try and get that bottom a bit flat. Keeping the bottoms level with the horizon line helps. And I might tickle the tops a little bit as well on that one. There we go, something nice and soft in the sky. I'll put some here. I'll turn the brush around and I'll do one over here. Just something to get into the blue there. Use my blending brush, wipe it. I'll keep the top on and bring the bottom down, give it that look. I quite like having my sun's hovering just within that sun glass at times. Get that turmoil going, it's important. I love the turmoil in clouds. Oh, everything's wet, so it's able to push and blend all those colours on there into the cloud itself. Okay. Now the only thing left to finish those clouds off as I do is put the yumminess in them. So work out where you want your yumminess. I've got a completely different fan brush and I'm blobbing dots on like that. And like I've done before, you tone them down but leave the glare there. Okay, and we're just adding the third dimension to the cloud, the yumminess. See the difference? And I'll do the same quickly to the other two. So mainly a bit there. Not, don't overdo it. You're bringing bits of the cloud in front of the other. It's like that. And we're just leaving that brightness there, but softening it into our cloud. Yay. And this one here. It's just that little bit extra detail that helps. Because remember, there's no rush to complete your painting. So I finished my sky pretty much as far as I want to go with it. Now the sun there, I want to grab me pounce. So I've cleaned it up again because it was contaminated with some yellow in it. And I've got titanium white from the tube, probably a little bit extra of the um, craft white there to make it transfer. This is totally optional. I want to condense the actual, yeah, there we go. Just get that nice, and a bit more stronger in there. That's just what I want. Okay. Beautiful. It looks, it looks bright and like a light. Now, before I finish anything, I want to grab my applicating brush. I've just noticed where my horizon line is going to be. I want to just get this pulled a bit. And what I might do, because that sun has such a bright light to it, we might put in a straight line, regardless how your river's going to go or your stream, in a straight line, put some of this down there in a reasonable straight line. And gently get your brush and pull it left and right. So we're going to have those elements in our water when our water goes on there. There we go. I know the stream's only going to be about here, so I haven't worried about putting blue. But if this was all going to be more water, I would have added more blue elements down here. But this is obviously going to be the snow that Mark had in his stream or his river. Okay, back to Mark Rossi's painting. So he's got his um, horizon trees pretty much going 
down into the middle of the painting and back up and off. So I want to keep that aspect going in mind. Obviously he had his in a portrait layout. I've done mine in a landscape layout. And he's got some lighter trees in the background and they've become darker in the foreground. So we're going to do that now. So I'm going to go for Payne's Grey and I want to get a bit of the craft paint just to lighten it up a bit. This will be my darker group of trees. So I'm just mixing it till I get the right value that I feel I want there. And if it's too bright or too dark once it's on the canvas, I can always tint it up or down and quickly paint over it. And I want to pretty much, oh, by the way, I've dried all this, so nothing's gonna mud up. So I wanna pretty much keep these nice and pointy and come down to the middle of the painting. I'm not worried how far I go I will worry about here, but I'm not worried too much how far I go because all this is going to be covered up with snow, snow hills and rolling land. So we're getting this, keep chiseling your brush. I'm using the fan brush. If you've got another brush, it works better. Keep chiseling it in a way so you're getting the tops here. See like here, you're getting the tops the way you want them, okay? Okay, we've pretty much got the first layer in the way we want them. Now I'm going to dry this so as it won't mud up the second layer I put in front of them, okay? But just before I do that, I just had a look in my monitor and over this side I'm going to get a little bit more white within that colour just so as I can get some distinction. And I'm going to go back to my monitor and have a look and see if that's doing what I wanted it to do. Yes it is. So I pretty much get some lighter values just over this to break it up, just so it's not so dark. Just like that, see? Over this side as well. And if you feel, uh, if you've done this and you feel it's too light, just put the dark back over it. You can keep going backwards and forwards till the cows come home tuning up your painting, okay? All right, I've cleaned my fan brush. The next color I'm gonna use is my forest green and I've got cad yellow light to get some of it a bit open with some brighter value in there. So it's just not a solid black looking. See, I'll tell you what, get in there. I've got to better wet the brush just so it's gonna move. And now I wanna keep chiseling this on my fan brush like that. So when I'm on the painting, I can get some nice sharp points here okay that's my goal so i don't want to come any lower here now because i'm going to start mucking up my stream uh, so we want to get these now i've dried everything do a bit load your brush up i can see this on top of those gray ones now And these are a lot lower. Now if I feel that needs some headlights on in there, I'll grab a bit more of the yellow and tint it up a bit. Okay, I've done the green. Now look at that, it looks very um, dull. There's no life in it. I feel I'm going to pick up some of the Payne's grey that I mixed over here for the back trees because that green needs depth to look real, okay? It looks too cartoony without the depth. So I'm picking up some of the Payne's grey and I want to carefully, that is still wet, I haven't dried anything. I want, to, I want it too thick, see how thick that went? I'll start over here where it's bigger. And we want to give this some depth now. Like I said, go backwards and forwards. If it's too light or too dark, go backwards and forwards with the colours. So I'm glad I didn't put that yellow in with it because it would have made it look very cartoony. And I don't want that cartoony look for this one. 
All right. Now, if you look at this half of the evergreens compared to the left half, you would see the difference, okay? Needed the darks in there. The darks make a lot of difference for the lights. As we all know, we learn that in our art journey. Oh, golly, nothing's going on here, is it? So I'll quickly get the rest of this dark scooted into these evergreens here. I'm not worried how far I come down here because that's going to be covered up. You need your brush a little bit damp so as the transfer happens nicely as well. There we go. Okay, just to finish this off to get to the next part, my brush that I was using to put all this darker value over the green there, I'll just wipe it. And I've got it in the brush and I'm gonna get some of the green as well. Okay. This is just detail. And roughly where I know the water's gonna be, I wanna transfer some type of imagery reflectibles for the water there. So I'm doing it here carefully. My river's not gonna be any wider than that. Well, I think it's a stream or a river, I'm not sure. And then I'll grab a pull down brush and Very dry. I'm going to press harder. There we go. Okay, I've just added some more of that cadmium yellow light into the forest green and roughly where the sun is, I'll try and give some bits of highlights to our evergreens here. Don't go too low down, just the tips of them and fade out as you're coming to the edge of the painting there. Just like so. Some highlights there, maybe some in the water as well. Pull that down as well before it dries. There we go. Now I've dried everything. I've got some gray out of the tube and I wanna lay in the land appropriately to our lake. And we want to keep the lake in perspective, okay? So we don't want to have it looking sideways. So I've got my toning grey from a tube. You can mix up a grey if you don't have one, okay? I'm going to use this for the basis of my snow. And I'll start at the edge of the river. So how do I want it? Marks kind of went up. So we'll come here. And there, there's rolling hills, obviously, in all this snow. So I want to get the edges done first. And um, it's pretty narrow in there. If anything, they're gonna creep up the edge of the painting. Like that. We just don't want any like see-through bits there, which I can see now. Now this can be a river coming out of the bushes or a lake just sitting there. I might fill that end bit in, I'll see how it goes. Now I want to um, pretty much make that's pretty much my lake there, okay? So I'll block it in just with this grey out of the tube. Now see, that's too much heavy retarded paint underneath. It makes it hard to brush over. How's that looking? That's getting there. So we'll get this side of the river done now. So I'm just... There we go, that'll do. Now I can just block that in. Get your brush a little bit damp here, and that's very dry, and it makes the paint drag. I'll get this all over here. Now Mark's got a cabin in there. If I've got time, I'm gonna put the cabin in it. You can put the cabin, you can put a fence, you can put any element into your painting. Okay, so this is obviously acrylic way. This is how I would do these type of Bob Ross style in acrylics. 
okay? The oil guys have different mediums than us and they work a lot different for them than what they do for our acrylics, okay? So you've come this far. Now, see all these edges here? We wanna get them to make it look perspectified. So I've picked up the, just a, a smaller brush again because everything has got to sit on the water like that, flat back. Flat back. Wherever we've got our little, keep them flat at the, at the bottom. See here, this is round. I want to bring that out into the water and flat. This is just getting everything plumbed in. Now I'm, I'm gonna look in the monitor. Yeah, I think I will just color that in a bit over there. It does look a bit weird open, so I'll just do the thinnest bit. See how it's going to look. And we can blow dry all this. So I haven't cleaned my brush. I've just put some titanium white down there and I'm just gonna get a lighter value of that gray now and get some lighter areas. So I, I said I was gonna dry it. I want the middle here very bright because our sun's out there. And I'll see if I need to dry this or not. So where I've got a hill coming in front there, I wanna just kind of create snow. Rolling on all this locked in gray. So that can come that way and then I'll bring that in front of it. How's that looking? I'll bring something up here. I'll pick up some more. Come on the top of that. And on the top of this one here. Just trying to make some snow out here. So I'm just pretty much following the, they're all going in their hill sites. So up here, same on this one. Okay, boom, boom, boom. And then this one is coming down in front of there. Oh, what a stupid brush stroke that was. So I'll get that back there. Some people might be great at this snow. I know I'm not. Look at it, it looks like blooming snot. But we'll get there. I'm gonna put some other shades in it to fix it up. So we're getting snow pretty much. I'll put some more white there. I'm just putting a thicker amount on the brush and I'm hitting the surface of all here with some thicker brush, with some thicker paint. Whoa, my goodness, look at what I've done there. Oh, I'll have to do something with that. See, I'm just making uppy downy strokes here and there. I need to look at more snow. <laughs> now in our water, we want to get some darker elements under there so it doesn't look like that land is floating. I've washed that filbert brush. I want to see if I can get the water and wishy-washy that off. Boom, wash the brush again. It's loaded with water. I dampened most of that off and I'm pushing it back down into there. See, I dried this before, so it's allowing this repair to happen. I didn't plan that to happen, but there we go. Oh, don't press too heavy like I did just there. I can get some of the green. And the Payne's grey, and just, there we go, it's all done. Fixed up a mistake. Probably here looks a bit degulated as well. That'll do. All right, I've mixed up some darker gray. 
being this far back, you can probably see the snow. It's like squinting your eyes. And we can see where we might need to incorporate some darker values. And if they've come too much into the lighter values, we can just trim those lighter values back up over those dark ones where we're sitting everything back okay. I know my snow looked a bit snotty when I started it, but hopefully when I'm finished, it's gonna look all right, all right? So I've got some darker gray here. Now, the, the snow on my canvas is not dried. This will help it smear and blend. So I'm thinking, I don't know, behind these bits here is a bit darker. You, see, you can even blow dry it so it's rubbery. But anyway, I'm getting some darker value there. Some darker value there. Yeah, see, it's not, you'll have a bit of a hard time. So I would suggest Put your brush down, giving it a dry, so it's a bit rubbery. Not 100% dry, but your paint's a bit rubbery, so it's not gonna, you'll be going backwards and forwards otherwise. And pretty much where my mountains are, I want that in front of that, so I'm creating the darker value here. See now what, how it worked when I've, don't press heavy, because I know under here there's a lot of dry, rubbery, retarded paint, and if I press too heavy, it's going to rip it. And then I'll show you how I bring the other mountains back, oh, mountains, hills in front. So I want a bit of darker value there. Let it scrape up. Look at that, beautiful. Up there like that. There's a bit of behind us there, which I could see. Boom, 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 and some in there. Where else can I see? Probably a little bit there. And probably some pockets. Give it some pockets. Bit of a pocket there. Bit of a pocket there. Um, yep, that's looking okay, said Ray. Yeah, I'm liking that. I'm getting involved with me painting here. When you feel you're getting involved, you really know something's happening. And that something is the magic on your canvas. We've all done paintings where you're loving the way one turns out or you're really annoyed that it's just not going the way you want. But when the magic happens, that's when something's going the way you want. All right, we've done that. Stop gas bagging, Ian. And now we'll just finish it off with the highlights to set everything back where it's got to go, okay? So I've given everything a dry and I've cleaned my brush again and I'm getting some pure titanium white now and work out this has got to come back over that one now there we go up there like that and then the same with this one It's mainly, watch this, getting that all the way back there. Blend it down, don't leave it in a silly hole line. And you can play around a little bit. This is the really highlighted or the really whiter snow because it's white. See, so I'm just getting it on my brush and Dancing it around now, doing pockets of white snow, thicker. Because in the snow, I mean, the snow is white, but it's got dark pockets, light pockets, all sorts of pockets everywhere. Interesting. See that side? It just looks a little bit, I hope it looks a little bit better than the other side. And then we're going to do the same here. Where are we? So we want this pretty much highlighted all the way down to our point there. Fine. Come into there. Where'd we have another one? Another one was about here, so we'll scoot him across and start bringing him right in front of that one and then blend him down. See, this side I'm going from the top down. This side I went from the bottom up. I'm finding, coming from the top 
down is easier for me. It's something you can think about when you do your rendition of this painting if you use an acrylics. That's why it pays to watch the whole video first. There we go. And do your pockets and detail and there we go. It's got light scrumbly blendables in there. Look at that. And then we've got to sit the edge of this on the lake there so it doesn't look like it's floating on that water okay now i've grabbed some of the Payne's gray okay and i've pulled it over near the titanium white i'm damping the brush okay and i'm just adding the bits of titanium just a little bit as i go i just want something so this titanium is still dark but the headlights are on okay i'll put a bit more darker back in there it's a bit too bright and this is just going to sit the snow edge banks onto our water there. Okay, I want to grab me bullshit stick to give me some nice straight edges. And we'll start out here. Oh, my eyesight ain't the best. Now keep all this stuff straight. Straight, like that. See what I did just then? I'll come down here. You want these lines straight. See there? Just like that. Okay, let me look in the monitor. Is that working? Yeah, it's sitting them down. Now, if I went all the way around that and cartoonified it, that's what would make your water or your hills look like they're standing up on the side of a wall. So we just want this there and then the same here we're scooting it out this is just the shadow I'm going to think I finish with that stick I'll try this side freehand and we can have the lightest water cascading or hitting and rippling against this darker edge okay so I've just done that in there a little bit, a little bit dark in there. Yeah, a bit dark there. Just something for our water to hit against. So this is actually adding the dark backdrop for our lighter highlights of water. That's what I feel I want to put in the painting. And lo and behold, we'll put some sort of ripple in the middle here just to break that up, keep it straight at the top. <laughs> My hands all wiggly and shaky. There we go. Now look at that, I said keep it straight and it's crooked as any crookedness can be, so I'll try and straighten her up. Oh, there we go. I was just looking at Marks and it gave me an idea. Not that he'd done it, but it gave me the idea, that dark bit. I'll put some snow on it. So that's obviously a shallow area in the lake or a rock. Okay, and it's got snow on top of it. There we go. So you want to get the white now quite wet. I'm damping the brush as I go. I don't want it too opaque. You wet your acrylics too much, they'll go opaque on you. You don't want to do that. Now I want to just do the water hitting the darker areas here. So we've got some water here and it can scoot out into the actual water as well. But keep all this level. Okay. These lines have got to be level. There's water there. Water's hitting all this darker area, the surface of the water. Wow, I don't like that. I've got a damp, let's hope I can wash it off. Yep, I've turned it into film, so I've dampened my brush and I've pulled all that off. That was just too much. But careful, I feel I'm rubbing my green trees away in the reflection there. Now, I'll probably use a knife and we'll just, yeah, let's use a knife and we'll put some, um, reflection lines in the water okay 
I don't like using knives, but got to give it a go. <clears throat> Keep them level. See, what can make you go crooked? You've got the handle of your knife level, but the, the face of it can be down. You, you've got to look at that and make sure that's what's level. If anything, I've gone and made mine a bit crookedish. I'm just covering up that mark there where I... That'll do. I don't know about that dark bit in the middle. It looks a bit silly, doesn't it? Okay, Mark had a cabin in his, but I've gone and made my hillsides here a bit too unorthodox to house a cabin. That's good enough. I'll leave this at that. You can add a cabin. I, I was even thinking about adding a rickety fence or some more trees, but I'll leave it at that. And using some of the same grey here, I'll just put my autograph here. Get it nice and wet. And this is where I always like to tell you to check out the links in the description below and see what suits you. All my arts for sale. There's my Facebook group page there. You can join and post your art there. If you do message me on Facebook, do tell me that you met me on YouTube because I don't accept any friend requests on Facebook unless I really know you're a real person and you're not a spamming robot. So you have to tell me that you saw me on YouTube. Okay, so we'll get this on there. And we'll put Steve's little footprint on there as well. And we'll whack a frame on it, see how this one looks. Yeah. That's not too shabby. It's nice and intense in the middle. If anything, in any art piece, you want your eyes drawn to that intense brightness right there. Not over here or up there, but mainly there, okay? Not every painting has to have it, but a good painting does have them. All right, we've got our snow, our sunset, our pine trees or evergreens, all right? I had fun painting that, and I hope you had fun watching this video as well. If you want to paint this painting and you're a beginner, be sure to watch this video a couple of times to know what you've missed out and know what you want to do in your when you start your painting, okay? It's very simple and look at what brushes I use and you can use something the same or similar, all right? And if you like what I've done today, you make sure you tell your friends. And if you don't like what I'm doing and I've upset you, you tell everybody, all right? All the best, goodbye, good luck and good on you.